here at the Timonio Rally School. Again, we just did a video showing the difference in braking performance. When you're in two-wheel drive, it takes longer to stop. And when you're in four-wheel drive, you can stop much more quickly and much more safely. Um, the video that we did didn't really show that well, so we went out and reshot it real quick. It's a different vehicle, but it's a better day. There's no snow dust, and you can see the wheels and tires and get closer up and that sort of thing on a hill. So hopefully it's a lot more clear. What's going on here? When you're in two-wheel drive trying to stop on the snow, you've got big front brakes and your brake proportioning is feeding those front brakes you know, more brake pressure and those front brakes are supposed to clamp down and get the vehicle to stop like they would on pavement while on snow you're not transferring that much weight. So what happens is the front tires tend to just lock up. What happens at the back? Well, the back, you've got smaller brakes uh, with less brake fluid proportioning and the vehicle's in gear. And this is where it gets a little bit weird because if those tires are turning, the axles are turning, the differential's turning, the drive shaft's turning, the transmission gears are turning, the engine is driving. Um, so you've got that braking force that you're trying to apply, but also the fact the engine's running is keeping those rear wheels driving along. So hopefully you can see that in the video, but long story short, you're braking hard in a two wheel drive, the front tires wanna lock up and the rear tires wanna keep turning. That's why you don't stop that well on the snow and ice in a two wheel drive vehicle. In four wheel drive, what happens is, even though you've got the big front brakes and all of that happy stuff going on, when you engage four-wheel drive with a transfer case, you're, you're essentially locking the center differential. It's not the semantics of it, many different types of vehicles, but all you really need to know is 50% of the power is going to the front and to the rear, and those are linked whether or not you're on the gas. So when you brake hard, even though the front brakes are bigger and it would want to lock the front brakes up, it doesn't allow that to happen. All four of your wheels are linked together through the drive shafts and the transfer case. Um, so you get much more even braking at all four wheels and that's why you can stop better on the snow and ice with a four wheel drive vehicle. You can stop more quickly in a more controlled fashion and the world's a happy place. One thing we can take a look at, I'll put into slow motion for you, is kind of how important that drive line is to your braking. Okay, you've got that center differential essentially is locked, it's 50% front wheel drive, 50% rear wheel drive, but you've got open differentials in the front and the rear of a vehicle. So what you can see is under heavy braking, basically threshold braking or even a little bit of lock up, what happens when they lock up is one of the front tires and one of the rear tires lock up. In this particular clip, the right rear tire locks up and the left rear tire still turning and the left front tire locks up and the right front tire keeps turning so you know you might think that maybe it's got a diagonal master cylinder that's feeding you know brake pressure that way it's not it's a normal master cylinder feeding the front on one circuit and the rear on the other circle that's only because of the differentials that you see that happening you know one tire's got a little more grip than the other that one keeps turning and the other tire locks um, so really really critical to know how your drive line affects your braking. Um, so we kind of, you can go down this rabbit hole as deep as you want to, and you can go out and do some experiments, you know, limited slip differentials, um, viscous and torsion center differentials, different types of vehicles, see how they work, get a camera out, look at it in slow motion, see what's going on, get to that point of threshold braking and locking the wheels up a little and see what you've got going on with your own vehicle. The moral of the story here, all we were trying to get to was, you can leave it in two wheel drive, sure, go blast around a parking lot and have some fun, but if you really need to get somewhere, you know, it's snowy, rainy, ice, slush, all kinds of stuff out there today. Four wheel drive is going to be obviously better going up hills and better at getting traction and accelerating. It's going to be nice and stable around the corners, but also moral of the story, it's much better on the brakes. You'll stop quicker and more safely. So um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this video is uh, a little more clear than the last one. I'm going to apologize that the last one was a little bit vague as to what was going on, but Hopefully you got it. If you got any more questions, add them in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time.